Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're real pleased to have our guest Chuck Mayer with us, who is the Director of the Airport. As you know, if, especially if you've been watching this program over the years, we have a number of departments in Sheboygan County, including the Health and Human Services Department, Healthcare Center, Sheriff's Department, Highway, those most people are familiar with, but many people may not be aware of the jewel we have in this community, and that is the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. Again, it's nice to have Chuck Mayer with us today. Thanks, Adam. Chuck, yeah, thanks. please begin by sharing with us a little bit about your background and your time working at the airport. Well, Adam, uh, I've had the privilege for the past 18 years of uh, managing that, uh, that wonderful facility. Um, <clears throat> prior to uh, the airport management, I had actually been with the County Planning and Resources Department for many, many years. Um, a, a transition occurred from 1987 through 1990 where I actually had kind of a split position with the county. I was the uh, airport zoning manager, uh, ex excuse me, the uh, county planning uh, department's zoning manager and then also the airport uh, department manager. So it was, I was kind of being pulled in two different directions and it, it worked uh, okay for about three years until we got the airport back on its feet and whatnot and rolling and then <clears throat> the county board saw fit to uh, basically reestablish that uh, department and uh, I've been there ever since and it's been, it's been a challenge and it's just been a wonderful experience. So how many years now have you been the director at the airport? 18. 18 years. Yes. And I know there's an interesting history with the airport, but certainly um, your involvement there, a lot of good things have happened. Why don't you share a little bit about the primary mission and responsibilities that your department has? Okay. Um, <clears throat> the uh, county airport department is, is probably one of the smallest departments in, in county government and, and we oversee one of the largest holdings as far as real estate that the county owns. I think besides the Sheboygan Marsh, uh, the airport may be the next largest holding that we have. Uh, at, presently the airport's expanded to uh, approximately uh, 1,040 acres. Uh, and a lot of that acreage, uh, you know, had occurred uh, probably in the last 18 years because of our expansion and whatnot. And um, it looks like uh, in the next few years we'll also be growing, you know, once again. But uh, the responsibility of, of the uh, airport department is to maintain that facility, to keep a safe uh, operations environment uh, for the air travelers, the uh, flight departments that are there, itinerant uh, aircraft that come and, and, and go through that facility. Um, and, you know, we're also responsible for the operations budget um, and um, especially uh, something I'm proud of is the long range planning that has gone into that facility and uh, as a, a real positive spin off of the, the long range plans, uh, the environmental and uh, economic impact studies that, that go with that planning uh, is the fact that um, you know, it's allowed the airport department to uh, realize just an enormous amount of uh, state and federal funding and grants and whatnot uh, that come into Sheboygan County to offset, you know, the cost of projects at the facility. Now, you've been the director <coughs> for 18 years, and in a moment we're going to get into more mm -hmm. of some of that long-term planning and yep. some of the projects that have come to fruition. But for our viewers who weren't aware that Sheboygan County operated an airport or aren't aware where it is, why don't you address that for them? Where is the airport and, and how long has Sheboygan County operated mm -hmm. an airport? The airport, uh, for anyone who doesn't get out of the city of Sheboygan, is about seven and a half miles due west <laughs> of the city limits. Uh, you just take Highway 23 uh, to the west and when you get to Highway TT, uh, you turn north and TT, you know, just take you right into, you know, that facility. Um, the uh, <clears throat> How long has the county had an airport? The airport has been in operation now. This is the 45th year. 45th year. Yeah. And yeah. interesting history as far as how that facility got started. Um, a lot of smaller airstrips around the county, uh, you know, back in the 20s, 30s, 40s and whatnot. And a, an awful lot of uh, debate between the city and county and uh, other municipalities as far as a, a, a publicly owned airport. 1956, the county board finally put that issue to public referendum, and it was the November 
1956 uh, uh, election that was on that ballot, and it passed by, you know, it was a very favorable margin. Uh, at that point, um, from what I recall, Parks Property Aviation Committee was created um, to oversee the airport. Construction began, I think, in 1958. It was completed in 1960 and officially dedicated in 1962. And we've had it ever since. So. Now, you mentioned some of the roles and responsibilities of your department. You said it was one of the smallest. Just how small is it? How many staff do you work with? Um, <clears throat> myself as a full-time manager, and I have two full-time airport maintenance technicians. And uh, this time of the year when we get into uh, you know, some uh, heavy snow conditions and whatnot for snow removal operations, then we have the uh, privilege of uh, being able to, to bring in a limited limited term employee to help us with the grounds maintenance, plowing, uh, things like that. And so far so good with that snow removal. Oh, so far this winter has been very kind to us other than the, you know, the, the snowfall we had the other week. Uh, and um, events like that just as an example uh, as far as the size of that, that airport. Um, <clears throat> I've got three plow trucks, uh, two fairly good size trucks uh, similar to what you find in the county highway department. And um, with a six inch snowfall, uh, we dispatch those two trucks and typically uh, each truck will put on over 130 miles in snow removal effort, you know, to clean up that facility. I'll be daring. So, and then we bring in some of the smaller trucks and we've got some large snow blowers and front end loaders and, you know, it's, it's quite, quite the task. Now, if someone was heading out there for the first time, Obviously, they'd see a pretty impressive airport, and you have mm -hmm. your office with your staff. And then there's the, the fixed base operator. That's where, <clears throat> as you well know, where the folks come and go primarily when they right. come into the airport. Who is the fixed base operator? The present fixed base operator at Sheboygan Airport is Western Shore Aviation. And that's a full service uh, uh, aviation oriented business that provides um, air charter services, they'll provide flight instruction, they rent airplanes, uh, they have a full maintenance shop for doing uh, uh, engine work, uh, airframe work, uh, annual inspections, full service. Very good. And when you say full service, just how busy is this airport? Can you put that in perspective for us. Yeah, it's something, again, one of the uh, um, technical points I'm really proud of as far as what we were able to do with that airport over the last 18 years uh, as far as attracting tenants, <clears throat> uh, that base aircraft there, uh, industrial corporate flight departments that are based there now. We're up to about 135 aircraft based at the facility estimated worth of those machines are in excess of $80 million. Uh, we experience over 66,000 aircraft operations a year, takeoff, landings, things like that. Uh, the big picture, what is Sheboygan, or where is Sheboygan Airport in relation to the other airports in the state of Wisconsin? Uh, typically, uh, I believe there's in excess of 103 public airports out there just in Wisconsin alone. Sheboygan would be ranked uh, number six as far as the number of based aircraft at a facility and number 10 as far as yearly operations. Very impressive. So, yeah, And well. finally, before turning it over to Bill, uh, give our viewers a flavor of the tenants that are primarily out there. You said you had a, over 100 airplanes that are based there? 135. 135. right. What types of tenants do we have out there? The, the backbone of our facility uh, is uh, made up primarily of industrial and corporate and some commercial flight departments. I think we've got about 14 corporate and industrial flight departments operating out of uh, Sheboygan Airport. Um, some of our main tenants out there would be Kohler Company, Bemis, Eclipse, um, Plastics Engineering, and you know the list goes on and on. We've got the, the, the large industrialists, plus we have smaller up-and-coming businesses which, which is really great because historically we'll see the smaller up and coming businesses start on the east side of the airport where we have the small individual hangars and uh, in time all of a sudden they transition over to the west side of the field where we have the larger corporate hangars. You know, and it, it's kind of nice to be part of, of that, uh, that growth you know, and, and seeing that happen every year. Very good. Okay. 
Chuck, you and your staff do a lot of the maintenance and repairs on the airport itself, but you're also very involved in the planning for the improvement, the long-range improvement of yes. the airport. How does that process work? How do you decide what to improve, where to improve? Um, I guess, uh, you know, just going back to, you know, when we first, when the county reestablished it, its management role at that facility back in 1987, a lot of infrastructure, you know, had, had uh, you know, kind of uh, been unattended to and whatnot. So it, it was a long and tedious uh, uh, ordeal getting uh, infrastructure back in place. With the assistance of the County Resources Committee uh, um, for many years, uh, who I answered to, and now in the last three years it was the Transportation Committee, uh, that, that was a real good sounding board to work with uh, in helping to prioritize projects. Uh, we also have an Airport Advisory Committee that is appointed by the county board. And we also use, uh, you know, that, uh, that group as a safety net to, to kind of help us out and put all of these projects in perspective, prioritize, you know, what is necessary, and then look at the cost, you know, as far as, you know, what, what's in the best interest of the taxpayer and, you know, where will the funds come from, you know, to, uh, you know, cause these, these projects to occur. Um, our, uh, the current uh, uh, long-range plan actually uh, reaches out through 2012 uh, with a, <clears throat> a major capital improvement uh, program for just about every year. And I'm sure we'll be talking about that mm -hmm. in a little bit, too, as far as, you know, what we've done and, you know, what's coming up. Mm -hmm. You always seem to be working on one project or another. What are the current projects that are underway? For this year, <clears throat> we're getting into the uh, uh, probably one of the, the, the biggest uh, projects in the history of that airport, and that's going to be the extension of our primary or our instrument runway. Uh, that'll be a four-year project, about $7.6 million. So we're, we're doing it in phases, um, you know, just as far as the uh, economic cost of, of that alone would make it a little bit more bearable, you know, to uh, have that uh, project completed. Um, then we're also looking at uh, some of the design concept work for expanding the west side of the airport to create more uh, industrial and commercial hangar lots, um, because at the present time I've only got one industrial lot available on the west side of the field and we do have some tenants or potential tenants wanting to you know develop out there so we need to keep up with with the demand are there any other longer range projects or wish list projects that you have out there 2012 is um, that's comfortable we know what what's needed as far as runway strengthening or ramp extensions things like that and and beyond that um, you know, I, I guess my uh, crystal ball that we use really isn't all that uh, clear at this time. And we'll just wait and see which way the flow basically goes as far as our development, what type of tenants, uh, especially the commercial industrial tenants that come on board, what their needs are as far as runway lengths, uh, itinerant uh, aircraft in, coming into the airport also as far as uh, size of aircraft that, uh, you know, typically would like to frequent uh, the facility and if we have to turn them away or not because of, um, you know, in infrastructure limitations that we have. Okay. How are most of the projects funding? You don't seem to be coming to the county board for great sums of money, yet the projects do have a substantial cost. So You're right. who really is paying for them? Where is the money coming from? A lot of this again falls back on, on that comprehensive long-range plan, uh, you know, that, that, that we work under. And uh, by having that plan out there, that the Bureau, the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics uh, is, um, you know, uh, dialed into and especially the FAA. Um, by keeping both those levels of government in, informed with what our intentions are, what our wishes are, we have been able to program a considerable amount of money from uh, Federal Aviation Trust and all of the under the uh, AIP program which is the Airport Improvement Program uh, state of Wisconsin is uh, allowed a block grant every year of money from the Federal Aviation Trust and that money is uh, funneled specifically into public airport improvements and uh, with over well, over 100 airports in the state of Wisconsin 
we're all competing for that money. And those of us who have our ducks in a row, as far as the planning, the studies, everything else, um, you know, we're, we're pretty much you know, right up on top there as far as being able to secure that funding. Has that funding stream stayed fairly stable, or do you see it being cut back with all of the state and federal cutbacks that we hear about? Great question. Uh, believe it or not, December um, of 2004, President Bush signed a, the federal uh, airport transportation bill, and which was this is really surprising is that the the, the funding um, the federal portion of funding for airport improvements has increased uh, from cost sharing of 90 percent, which typically that's you know the way it had always been. That's bumped up to 95 percent, mm. and that is guaranteed from uh, this year through 2007. So the timing couldn't be better. Here, Sheboygan County is with this mm -hmm. major runway extension, 7.6 million, and the federal government now is going to cost share that 95 percent. Bureau of Aeronautics will will be um, contributing two and a half percent. So now uh, the airport, myself as the department head only need to approach the county board for two and a half percent of that, that project. It's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. We had started out initially in, in, in the county five-year plan. I had shown about 1.5 million in county funds needed to support that, that 7.6 million project. Now we're down to about $250,000. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Then talk, talk a little bit more about the economic power of the airport. Mm -hmm. Somebody might ask me, well, why have an airport? What does it really do for the county? What does it, does it do for our area <clears throat> economically? Going back again, tying in with, with the plans and the studies that we've done, back uh, as far back as 1993, uh, we initiated a, an economic impact study. And then again in 95, 97, 2000, 2002, that's the latest. Haven't had a chance to, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, to um, initiate another study. But I guess the bottom line is, uh, average on these studies show that the the economic benefit versus uh, the expense of the airport, 24 to one, is is typically what we're looking at as far as the the indirect, direct economic benefit dollars coming back into the community by having that airport, uh, you know, and, and then looking at what it costs the county to, uh, you know, maintain the airport and do the improvements and things like that. Um, the last study, I think, identified about $17 million of economic impact the airport had on Sheboygan County alone, over $20 million uh, uh, impact of Sheboygan County and the state of Wisconsin combined as far as jobs, other supportive services, um, sales uh, that occur as a result of the airport being there, um, tourism, which is mm -hmm. just, as you know, with our world-class golf courses, if it wasn't for that airport being an integral part of that mix, yeah, it makes a big difference. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. Adam? And when you say 24 to 1, you're saying for every dollar the county puts into that airport, we're getting a return of $24 back in the community. Right, whether it be direct, indirect, uh, it, that's the influence the airport has on dollars coming back into the community. Very yes. impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. You talked about <clears throat> some, in project, some projects that you're working on, and I don't know if you mentioned the, uh, the new Welcome Center that's underway. Mm -hmm. What's the status of that, and how did that come about? Yeah, <clears throat> well, we had some real dedicated uh, airport tenants and a, a local uh, EAA chapter 766 that uh, teamed together and uh, it took many, many years of um, planning, uh, fundraising. Uh, that uh, Sheboygan County Aviation Corp basically raised $1.7 million in, in donations you know, for this welcome center and learning center to be built. And um, as I, the video is rolling, I believe, and the viewers can see, you know, the, the, the shell of the building now, basically, the, the superstructure is up. Um, the Sheboygan County Aviation Corp is hoping to have that building done by Wings and Wheels again on Father's Day, which will be June 19th. And that will kind of be the grand opening of, of this new facility. Um, 
we're really looking forward to it. it it's going to be such a, a great centerpiece uh, to the airport. It's on fronting on the main ramp so that as uh, you know, folks fly into Sheboygan County that have never been here before, that first impression, you know, that, that is so important to, you know, kind of what to expect of Sheboygan County. Well, there's no question during your tenure, there's just been dramatic improvements made to the airport. And I imagine some of our viewers perhaps have taken the time to go out there for the Wings and Wheels event, which is mm -hmm. each year on Father's Day weekend, I believe, is it not? That's right. And I think <clears throat> uh, if, if you haven't been impressed in the past, you're certainly going to be impressed this year when you see not only this new welcome center that they're, they're hoping to, I think, open the doors for the first time on that right. event, if all goes well. And you've also had some additional expansion, have you not, mm -hmm. uh, to the, what's south of the airport? Right, and maybe if we could just take a look at the, the aerial photo that um, we brought along here, and just identify some of the things that, that have occurred out here at the airport. Um, the, the last time we, you know, we'd done a, a program here at TV8 was in 2002. Since 2002, there's been an awful lot that has happened at the airport. Um, one of the biggest projects since that time is the relocation of County Trunk Highway O. Um, County Trunk O used to run directly in front of the airport, as you can see on the pointer here. Now we've located, relocated that road further to the south to make room for additional individual hangars on the uh, east side of the airport and then a corporal, uh, excuse me, corporate and uh, commercial development on the west side of the airport. Uh, so that's one major capital project that you know has been completed so far. Um, this past summer, the County Highway Department uh, was able to construct an additional 35 hangar lot area for development before the Highway Department was ever able to get the asphalt down on that project. We had two tenants, you know, new tenants wanting to build out there already. Um, in spring, uh, this spring, um, at this point in time, uh, I am expecting six leases to be signed with the county for development on, on the east side of the airport, you know, which is uh, really great. And, and these folks are coming to us. Uh, uh, one of the new uh, tenants is uh, relocating from West Bend Airport, and I've got another um, a tenant coming down to us from Manitowoc County, a, a auto supplier, uh, a manufacturer wanting to develop here because of, you know, the, the progressive facility that we have. And so. when you talk about, you know, all the, atten the tenants that are out there, the multi-million dollar planes and obviously mm -hmm. the buildings to house these planes, um, we had a real tragedy in our, in our country's history in New York with 9-11 uh, and there's been a heightened level of security not only in everyone's lives but certainly at, at airports. What measures have you taken or has the county taken as a whole to improve the security at our airport? Okay, well, I think it was a few, <clears throat> few years before 9-11 was upon us. Uh, we had other uh, situations at county airport as far as uh, uh, problems with uh, wildlife, deer <laughs> sure. running across runways and, and being hit by airplanes and things. And it was not a very, very safe environment. Um, with the help of some funding from our corporate and industrial tenants and, and county board, we were able to come up with, uh, uh, again, a you know, cost-sharing uh, formula, and uh, the, the FAA was able to, again, pay the majority cost of a perimeter fence. You know, we've got 5.6 miles of perimeter fence around the airport. The fence is 8 foot high, uh, barbed wire topping. After the 9-11 incident, uh, we then basically move forward to expand on that, that uh, perimeter fence rather than animal abatement. Now it's kind of animal abatement and security. The uh, nine gates that we have on the southern quadrant of the airport, which is our terminal area, I was able to transition all of those gates to uh, a key fob access, where prior, uh, you know, basically you just drive up to the white line in front of the gate and, and the gate would open automatically and anybody could, you know, uh, ingress, egress, uh, you know, on, that, on those locations, that has all changed now. It is, you know, we got it buttoned up. Um, and then we also uh, move forward uh, beyond the, the security, uh, uh, access security and, and um, 
brought on board uh, video surveillance at, at these um, gated accesses. Funding for all of this, um, we were able to work with Homeland Security. And uh, funding on, on those projects were paid for 100%. I know when the PGA rolled into town last year, and obviously it was a tremendously successful event, and mm -hmm. you had a lot of people coming and going at the airport. Uh, again, you were able to get creative and, and garner some funds to improve the lighting out there, if I right. recall correctly. Mm -hmm. And what else? There were there were a few other things that I thought you were able yeah. to do. We it, it enhanced the uh, the video surveillance. Uh, we had the uh, the FAA in cooperation with the FAA. They came in and uh, uh, provided a temporary air traffic control tower, and just a whole bunch of other infrastructure improvements. Uh, uh, we had a pledge from uh, the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics to pay up to one hundred and eighty nine thousand um, dollars. You know, to to help the county with you know uh, supporting that that type of uh, huge public event, um, funding from the uh, Wisconsin uh, Office of Administration uh, was able to garner another ten thousand for airport security. It, it was it was just great, you know. And uh, so, our, so again, our viewers listening today and, and hearing this perhaps for the first time, certainly if they were under the impression that uh, this county airport was run under county property tax levy dollars, uh, though that's a part of the puzzle, uh, when you talk about the multi-million dollars that have gone into the extensions of the runways and everything else, which you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. to build a 80, 90, 95% uh, reimbursement from the state and federal government, just phenomenal. And obviously, a tremendous asset to the community. Mm -hmm, definitely, and I guess just to add to that a little bit, as far as uh, my operating budget per year, as an example for 2005, I think we're at $398,000. It's total operational cost. <clears throat> Out of that, uh, better than one third of that amount is offset by revenues that are generated on the airport proper. On top of that, if you look at the uh, the number of uh, improvements out there by private sector, uh, commercial, industrial sector tenants. Uh, the buildings that they have put up are assessed at over, well, I think it's close to four million dollars. That also comes back to us on the tax roll. We only had a 30-minute program to work with, but I hope you certainly got a appreciation for the immense responsibility and the value that the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport brings to our community. and. And Bill and I certainly appreciate Chuck being here today to give us a brief snapshot of, of the work that ensues out there. If you haven't had an opportunity to visit your airport, I encourage you to do so. Uh, right now with the snow out there, things being a little slick, it may not be as pretty as it is in the summer, but you don't have to wait till wings and wheels to get out there and again, check out your airport and all the progress. As you could see from the, the aerial photo that Chuck was looking at earlier, uh, it's a it's a beautiful site and there's a lot that's been done and whether it's the base operator or Chuck himself, I'm sure they'd be happy to uh, share with you or answer any questions that you might have. So don't hesitate to go out there and check it out. Next month, we're gonna have another department head as our guest and that will be Dale Pauls from the healthcare centers. And as some of you may be aware, we continue to be seeking to own and operate two facilities, yet reduce the property tax levy to do so. And that's been a tremendous challenge for the county board and our staff. So we're pleased next month that Dale Pauls is gonna be here to shed some more light on that. And until then, on behalf of County Board Chairman Bill Gehring and myself, Adam Payne, thank you very much for joining us.